And so if you hear a bunch of thudding coming from that direction, it's worship team. Because this is not ready to practice. This is not this is not Monday. This we're not is, doing the rap on Monday. We're not. This is a this is a late rap. It is. And so this is a late rap session. <laughs> and I'm not about to rap. <laughs> hey everybody, how you doing? My name is Pastor Darren and I am one I just said that I'm one of the pastors here at Connector Point Church and with me <laughs> as always Pastor Chris Falk. Lead Pastor Connection Point Church. Is that dramatic enough? Oh, that's dramatic okay, enough. Yeah. yeah, that'll work. So we are in the second second week. English is hard. The second <laughs> week. It's because it's not of, Monday. It's not Monday. We I know it's, numbness it's on Monday. Tuesday you're like you're so evening. you're so numb from on Monday mornings. It's like you're just kind of like in that weird state. So you just kind of roll with it. You uh, lose the ability to communication gets tougher Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It gets really <laughs> tough. Everybody goes through the law. So on. This past Sunday, a few days ago, uh, we were in the second week of our message series entitled the Disciple Path. Were you setting me up? Yeah, Yeah. the Disciple's Path. (laughs) And so we got a few paths around here, so just clarifying things. And uh, and so in the second week, you know, the first week we really you really broke out. You know the whole oh, idea. We also bring in our 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 our, our code. You know our not our code, but our 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 uh, our conviction. Thank you. Whew, it's a bad day. Our conviction of connect, yeah. grow, go. Dang, I'll, never mind. I was going to say I helped write that whole thing. I should know what this is. <laughs> but uh, the, uh, the our conviction, connect, grow, go. Last week was about the connection aspect of it, and this week was a big part of it was grow. Yeah. And growing is something that's really hard to do alone. You can't grow alone. I mean, you, you you can grow a little. Yeah, of course you can. But uh, you know, our spirit. You know what we were trying to set the stage for this weekend was Jesus's model that he used to raise up disciples. Was spiritual growth occurs in community? Mm -hmm. It's cultivated in a series of community. You have to have the connection, right, to a spiritual body, to the Lord Himself to really grow and maximize what God has for us. I mean, if we really want to become the people God's called us to be, if we really want to look like Christ, it's going to be really hard to do by yourself. Mm. Spiritual growth is cultivated in community. And, and so, you know, this weekend our goal is just to, for all of us to go back to the Scripture and realize exactly how did Jesus do that? How did he grow these men? And they were such a ragtag bunch of fellas sure. who ended up changing the world. Amazing. I know it's, and that's the me, one of the selling points about trying to do this thing alone is Jesus himself, you know, that whole son of God thing. Yeah. Here he is, yeah. son of God, per- perfect in his own, in the flesh, but yet even he didn't try to do things himself. Now, does that mean you never go off on your own and, and try to get your thoughts about you and allow God to pour into you? And you may have to have a sabbatical sometimes. Jesus did all those things, but yeah. 75% of what we read about, if not more, 85% of what we read about Jesus, he was always in the company of at least three others, sometimes as many as a, as a, as a, as, as 12 up to 60 and sometimes even, you know, thousands of course, yeah. but he hung around 12 like regularly. Regularly. Yeah. So, you know, the whole idea is yes. Can, can you go off and study the Bible alone? You should, you should yep. be studying the Bible every single day, right? You should be praying every single day. You're not going to have people around you on that. You should go on spiritual retreats. Absolutely, because that's a personal relationship and a yeah. personal growth. However, with that, it's a, it's an addition to the one-on-one relationship you have with the Lord. Just as we talked about last week, it was about connecting to Christ, but then it's also He. He is the one who initiated. That's right. After we come to Christ, we are to connect with other believers. The same happens if we're going to grow in our faith. I need to study the Scriptures. I need to pray and develop my relationship with Christ receive his word, hear the Holy Spirit, but also need to know there's the aspect of also studying the Bible, also diving into my relationship with him with a brotherhood, with a sisterhood of people in the faith around me. Now iron sharpens iron. Now two are better than one. Uh, Personal growth, yes, but also growth in community. It's not one or the other, it's both and. Another cool um, aspect of that whole thought is that these people in general didn't come to Jesus. Mm. He went and found them. He went and found them. And he created this group on his own, mm-hmm. chose it himself. He did. 
surrounded himself with people that that he felt like I'm sure he was led by somehow or another because he's God. But even without that, we're still we have. If you are a Christian, the Holy Spirit in us, and if you you can go out and find like minded people, and then you can surround yourself with, and you guys can really grow together and do and change the world. Kind of what change the world. I mean, that's what he did, and that's what we're still called to do. Right. One of Jesus's early teachings. I mean, early the Sermon on the Mount. Right. Yep. Is he has called us. And this is plural. It's in the plural form. We together, as we grow in Christ, become city on the hill mm. and light in the darkness. You know, he talked about a city, but a city is made of a population, right? And each of us together becomes a candle lighting up into the darkness, and we become salt to the earth. There's so much influence that you and I can have as if we will allow ourselves to grow in Christ together together. Uh, in our pursuit to you know be who, who God called us to be, so I think sometimes if you've been in this uh, in the church for a while, you've been, if you've been going to church for a while, um, even if you're kind of new, you've heard a lot of these phrases: "saw the earth, city on the hill." And I don't know if we completely resonate with them. I think we just hear them. I don't yeah, think yeah. we really pour us up. They're very poetic, but they're really. I mean, he's being at, at the time when he was speaking those things. He was being very literal and pointing at something metaphorically. You know, he was looking out in the distance at whatever it was he was talking about. I can almost guarantee he was doing Absolutely. illustrations when he did it. Yeah. And he used a particular illustration that you dove into this past weekend. And I can imagine they were out somewhere, uh, him with a group of the disciples, and he was talking to them, and he looked across one of the little creeks or across a field, and he saw mm -hmm. a group of, mm -hmm. of, of farmers mm -hmm. out there with, with their sow sacks and their sea sacks, and they were sowing yeah. out in the field, and he began to tell them a parable. Yeah. And you unpack that parable for us. Yeah, this is cool. This is so neat. This is Jesus, his style of teaching, how important this is, because you know we, we're, we don't think much uh, in terms of images yeah. in our educational system, the way we're taught. But to a Jew, everything was imagery, right? Everything was imagery. So Jesus, yeah, picks up some seed, and he looks out to the crowd that had gathered there to hear him preach. And Jesus says, let me tell you about the sower who went out to sow some seed. And he just starts talking about it. And I can even imagine, right. you know, <clears throat> Jesus acting like he's throwing seed out on the ground, right? And Jesus says, the sower went out, and he sowed some seed, and it fell upon the path. The birds came, devoured it, and ate it up. And some fell upon the rocky ground, and it immediately sprung up. But because there's not much earth there, it had no root. The sun comes out, and the Cries plant up. dies. Yep. Right? Some fell among the thorns, and it grew up along with the weeds. But as the thorns grew, so did their ability to choke out yep. what he had planted, and it bore no fruit. And then he said, but then there's the good ground, and out of it comes a 30-fold, a 60-fold, a 100-fold harvest, right? The harvest depending on mm -hmm. the soil. And, and Jesus, I love this. He says, and if you have ears to hear, listen. Because, you know, he knew the one thing about all of us is, is we're really good at hearing, not always good at listening, mm -hmm. right? And we even do that when it comes to the Word of God. And we're not going to grow and be like him if we just, you know, take a casual look at scripture or the word, we got to dive into it. And he's calling us to pay attention. And in this, he's, he's really illustrating how we receive his word. Mm. If we receive it with the right soil, we can produce a harvest. But if we don't, each one of those illustrated something that they all would have understood. It's going to choke out the potential that you and I have to grow in Christ. Connection, the original thought in this last week, the week before, um, like connecting to God, uh, a lot of those things are they, are, they are intentional to some degree, but Christ did the work there, right? Yes. He connect, he's the one that made that connection with us. He came to us, and we just had to believe, right? Right. Second part of that, though, growing, that's intentionality. That's, mm -hmm. I mean, you have to seek uh, to grow. You have and you to, have to f just decide to follow him. Like for his disciples, they, they had to make the decision to give up where they were at mm -hmm. and to, to follow him. And they made that choice, right? And that's similar to us now. Does that mean you have to quit your job and go live on a hillside in a white robe and wait yeah. for the Lord to no, turn? No, 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 of course not. But what it does mean is, is as uh, you, I think you said it last week or might have been the week before, the picking up the, your, your own cross, your cross. Yeah. 
the um, so we had to pick up that cross and go and carry it and, and walk with him. Yeah, there's a sacrifice that yeah. comes with growth. Exactly. Um, Rick Warren said something like this one time in, in a conference uh, so, uh, environment where he was speaking. He said, there's, there's no growth without stretching. Mm-hmm. There's no, or excuse me, there's no growth without pain. There's no pain without stretching, right? And there's there's no stretching uh, without um, you know loss, That's right? Or maybe it's no stretching, no pain, no loss. But we we get the image, right? Mm-hmm. It's like when you're growing uh, through adolescence, you start having pain. You start having pain, True. right? Because the bones are are growing, and now your skin is stretching, and and so you have growing pains. It also means you've got to give something up. We know right. when, you, when you become an adult, you give up childish things, right? So there's always loss. Um, Jesus is describing to his audience that day, if you really want to grow and you want to produce for the kingdom and you want to follow me and be my disciple, yeah, here's the cross. You've got to watch the condition of your heart. You've got to be disciplined when you receive the word of God. Mm. Because all of us, and I, I would say everybody watching, all of us at times could say there was a moment when I know the Word of God was speaking to me, that God spoke to me, that the Bible spoke to me, and we turned a deaf ear to it. Because I really didn't want to listen to it at that moment. I wanted to do my own thing. I justified my actions, whatever. We all have our excuses. Mm-hmm. Most of us can also say there's been a time where uh, we were like the rocky soil, You know, we received it. Oh, that's really good. But we didn't stay committed to it for the long haul. That's what happened there, right? They had no root, and so it just didn't last long. Right. The third one, the the thorny ground, Jesus went on to explain and said, this is the cares of the Lord cares of life, the cares of the world. Right. Right. And you, know, you start out growing, uh, you start out with the right focus, but then all of a sudden you get so concerned about life, relationships, finances, health, whatever it might be, right? And he says, it chokes the fruit out. It chokes mm. you down, and then you don't bear any fruit for the kingdom. Jesus is telling him, here's the cross you and I all have to bear. And, and, you know, a cross looks differently in different situations. But when it comes to growing in the word, every one of us has to take a look at our heart every time the word comes and says, okay, am I paying attention? Mm. Am I listening to it? Um, Am I grasping this so it can take root? Because here's something we said Sunday. and um, Growth, for us to grow, the seed of the word of God has to take root in us. And so like the problem with the rocky ground, they had no root. We have to choose to let the word of God, when we receive it, really dived in and get mm-hmm. real and serious to us. We've got to let it take root. And then we got to make sure we don't allow the cares of the world to choke it out of us. Right? Right. That is, you know, you meant, you said, you called it a, a cross to bear. There is sacrifice and there is discipline involved in growing. And that is back on us. Like you said, you know, Jesus gives us a word, but what happens out of it? A lot of that, you know, that that depends on how we receive it in order how we grow from it. And so um, we believe that that the word of God comes in a couple of ways. Number one, we know it comes from the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I, and I believe also that even though we're humans, the authorly whoever's speaking to you that day, as they have prayerfully and and subjected themselves to the Spirit of God, a lot of what's coming out of their mouth is very much same similar in the sense that we need to be listening, right? Yes. But here's the thing about <clears throat> listening and or reading the Bible, listening to a message or reading the Bible, and that is that I think most people just read or listen for information. Mm. You know, they're mm. they're gathering information, yeah. right? Whenever we should uh, we should allow, like you were saying earlier, allow that word to be, a, you know, for, for, it's literally a mirror for us to reflect in and say, man, what part of us is this really getting into? And to allow, you know, uh, that self inflection to uh, to happen. Mm-hmm. That's so good. You know, what the the phrase that's running through my mind while you're talking is is we should approach the word of God and look for it, not simply for information, but for transformation. Exactly. You know, the goal of the word of God is not to inform us, it's to transform us. Right. This is Romans 12. 
being transformed by the renewing of our mind. This is progressive. This is a, a process, a daily going to the Word of God, but receiving it with the right heart, the right intentionality, so it takes root. Because if it takes root, and watch this, watch this. So I just love play on words here. If the Word can take root. Get excited. I, I, I get excited. If it can take root, then it can bear fruit. Well, look at him go. Look at that. Is that good or what? <laughs> that was good. If it takes root, it can bear fruit. And that's transformation. We want the word of God to transform us so we bear the fruit of Christ. Hmm. That's so, good, wasn't it? That's pretty good. That, 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 that preach. That would they, preach. As they say, that would preach. So, <laughs> so if we're growing, that means somewhere we're rooted. I mean, it's just that simple. It's mm -hmm. like if you're, and if you're not growing, you need to check your root system out. You need to check your root system. See what you're planted into. Yeah, check the soil. Exactly, because you could be in some bad soil. I mean, it's just true. We're not bad soil, but you could be in some no, bad soil. But our soil. heart can be exactly. in the wrong place. Exactly. Right? Right? Yeah, not, your whole, your objective. It's not fertilized with intentionality and, and seeking the truth or being mm -hmm. open to the Holy Spirit. Motives are always interesting. The motive is there, buddy. It's key. It is key. And so... Uh, when you when you wrapped up this whole message Sunday, how would how did you put your 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 Kentucky bow on top of that My thing? Kentucky bow. Spiritual growth is cultivated in community, right? And go. and so if if we're going to grow, we've got to check our heart and how we receive the word of God. Now watch this. We know nothing grows to its fullest potential unless it's in the right environment. Mm -hmm. Right. I right. mean, some things grow in pure sun some yep. grow in shade some need a lot of rain some things need little rain yeah, really we have struggle to, to bring sure. a palm tree from hawaii and plant it in my yeah, backyard didn't work very yeah well. it, yeah i bet it didn't last long it didn't last long. <laughs> uh, we have to look at the atmosphere mm -hmm. so um within ourselves and within the groups that we study the bible with and have these discussions we talked a little bit this weekend about make sure the environment's right Right. Make sure the environments are okay. You receive the word of God, receive it with full intention to let it take root, and then make sure you keep yourself in the right environment. You need to be in an environment of acceptance, a place of affection. You need to know that uh, the people you're studying the Bible with or growing in your faith with care about you. You also need authenticity. You need to be able to take off the mask, get real with one another, and you need to be able to pray for one another. And I think that those keys are valuable to the atmosphere being right. And to do so, uh, you were, we were, as the whole message has been, it, it's been about in this series, is, is a lot of that can take place and can take place and will take place in a group. And another thing about all this is, as far as sacrifice goes, is you're going to have to sacrifice an amount of time for this to happen. You're going to have to. I think a lot of people, you know, we, we'll set aside, you know, three hours on a Monday night for Monday night football. Mm -hmm. We'll set back a whole day on Sundays for football. Yes. If you're here in this in this area, we'll six part minutes of, for Jesus. Uh, and well, Friday <laughs> night, you know, we'll go to the we'll go out and watch the Jackson Indians. Hey, go Indians! But and we'll spend two and three, three hours out there. Right. And like you said, we will spend one hour, and then we go like, man, I don't have time to go a group. I don't have time for a group. Man, look, my whole week's right, tied up. Right. But right. I'm not telling you not to go to ball games or watch no, ball games because no. I go to all the same things you do. Yeah. But you got to make time. And, and this is not um, this is not supposed to be looked at as a, a, a church program. Exactly. It's not you know a system that I'm supposed to be a part of. It's not someone's going to get on to me if I don't show up at group. And you know, and I and I actually said this Sunday. It, there's a principle here that's biblical that's more important than it's, it's not a church program. It's a biblical principle we're trying to communicate. When you go to that Mark chapter 4 passage and Jesus is teaching the sower and the seed, something amazing happens in verse 10. The crowds left. Mm -hmm. That's just like Sunday mornings, right? I mean, you hear the message, people leave. But verse 10 says the 12 disciples and a few other folks few stuck around. Yep. And they gathered around Jesus and they began to ask him questions about what he just preached. That's right. And I would say to you, those in that environment received more root yep. that bore fruit than the masses who left after the sermon was over. So if you want to call it a group, a group. If you want... 
however it's set up and look, the principle is we need to be connected with other believers. We need to go beyond just hearing the word. We need to be in a place where we can authentically reveal our hearts and ask the questions and dive into the word. And you need to do it together. And here at CPC, we've created groups to kind of help that format. Mm. You know, it's a, it's not a guilt trip about being no, in one of our groups. Of it not. is a principle we want to help you be in an environment to grow. I think you can grow friendships in these groups. That's what the whole, you know, I think it's going it to it be about relationships. Yeah, it should be building relationships and friendships because Jesus, Jesus considered Peter his friend. He sure did. I mean, they were close friends. He, had, he was close friends with John. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he was close friends with James. Yes. And those were his closest. And those were the people he, those were his confidants, the ones he could tell, he tell some him. things. But, you know, he had the larger group that he shared some things with. Right. He really confided in that, that tight-knit group. And so that's, yeah, that's exactly what you should be getting out of a, out of a group is you should be gathering friends. In fact, yeah. the people that you come to lean on the most. Yes. That's the model Jesus gave us, you know? and. And I think if, you know, we say we, we're Christians, so our whole life is modeling things after he has, he did them. So you might as well model your life and get in a group. Come on. Not because man. you're forced to, because you need to, but hopefully you'd want to. Yeah. And it'll help you grow the and help you. Is key. Yeah. Man, you got to get your want to. Get your want to. They got some expression back in. <laughs> <laughs> in, in kids' church about you want to, and I'm not even going to try to butcher it, but yeah, yeah I guess you ask want your to. Kids. Ask your kids. They'll tell you, you. Ask you the want to thing from Pastor D from Kiss Point. <laughs> Anyways, we're out of here. It's uh, Welcome to it. It'll be a Wednesday, Wednesday wrap. It'll be a Wednesday wrap. It'll be a Wednesday wrap when this comes out. And so until yeah. next Monday, yeah. we'll wrap the wrap again. We'll see you then. Bye. We're out. Bye. <laughs>